Joining us now from New York is Ambassador Diego Aria. He is a Venezuelan politician and served <clears throat> as the permanent representative of Venezuela to the United Nations. Ambassador, thanks for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. This has been a huge win for the opposition Democratic Unity Coalition. In fact, they have got a two-thirds majority. What is the significance of this victory? You know, this is a, a state, a, a regime that's been in, a, a, in a, like the doctors say, in a terminal state for a long time. But like all people who are, are in a terminal stage, they have a stage of denial. So the, what's coming up now is a shock to the political system of the regime that for many years or for 16 years have kept the monopoly of all the public powers. These have very important implications if the regime accepts uh, the results as they have been taking place now. It's a, it's a very important step forward and it's not going to be an easy road to travel. Well, at this stage, we're hearing that Nicolas Maduro has accepted the outcome of the election, but you talk of very important implications. Tell us about some of those implications. Well, he says he accepts, and he says that this is a, the, it's not a victor of the opposition, but a victor of what he calls a counter-revolution. And he already is taking steps, like, for example, uh, appointing the uh, 13 members of the Supreme Court, uh, appropriating the National Assembly television station, uh, um, uh, uh, starting a new law to preserve employment for the next two or three years for uh, people all over the country. So, in a way, they want to continue governing and ruling as they have done for 17 years, regardless of the laws that were able to pass constitutionally in the National Assembly. This is serious because still the regime controls all the, the finances. Uh, it will not be possible to change the, the, the economic policy, which has been a disaster because on the assembly, you just can't control the budget. But in the past, the government has failed to obey uh, constitutional uh, decisions. So you're saying this is serious, what you're seeing from Nicolas Maduro and his government. Are you concerned that there could be civil unrest on the streets of uh, Venezuela? Well, I hope not. You know, fortunately, we're in a Christmas. People in Christmas behave in a different way. But there are decisions, for example, by the president of the National Assembly today, Cabello, uh, uh, you know, which are actually very threatening to, uh, to the stability. And threatening, you know, they, they do not want to accept that it was a, not only a victory, it was a massive triumph because uh, more than two and a half million people voted uh, more for the opposition than for the government. So in a way, this was a plebiscite, and they should understand that this is the case. But I said before, this is going to be a very difficult road. It's going to be very dangerous. I think the regime today is more dangerous than it was before the election. Well, put this election in some kind of context for us. Here we have uh, Nicolas Maduro, a socialist party. They lost even in their traditional strongholds, you know, the low-income areas around the capital, Caracas, even in his home state, Barinas, they lost there. Why was there such deep unhappiness with the government? You know, uh, I have always stated that the main victims at the end of uh, wrong political uh, and social policies are the poorest people. And the poorest people, some of them were supporters before of Chavez. And they have been the victims, you know, of the highest inflation in the world. They are the victims of the violence that kills 25,000 people a year in Venezuela. They are the victims of scarcity. So they are the ones who would like to have a better future, a better future for their children. So uh, this, is a, this vote, even, uh, we, we knew that they have you know, done, taken certain advantages before the election. It's a massive blow uh, to, to the regime, but I don't believe that they're going to change course, even though economic circumstances may really force them. Now, what are the chances of the legislative part of the government holding a referendum on Maduro's presidency, what's sometimes referred to as a recall vote? Is that likely? Well, you know, it is not very easy today in Venezuela. If you will not have to uh, take this step, you have to go before uh, an officer of the National Electoral Council and provide your fingerprints, your photograph, and to say that you would like to revoke Maduro. In the past, we have something called the Tascon list, which was an apartheid list. When we have this referendum, and four and a half million people of Venezuela, we became victims of discrimination, accusation, because we signed a revocatory. Besides, I don't believe that that would be the case. I believe, actually, the, the, the loss here, I think, is important to, to uh, underline. 
was not the, uh, <laughs> there was a loss was of a few group of people, Maduro, Cabello, and the main leaders. But it was a victory of all the Venezuelans who want to live better in peace and reunification process. And that's what they don't want to understand. The defeat, the, the, the people who were defeated were very few, Maduro, Cabello, and a few other colleagues. So at this stage, we're seeing, as you pointed out, a lot of political opposition from Nicolas Maduro and his government. But if we look at the reality of the situation, you know, those factors that you pointed out, uh, economic factors, there's, you know, food shortages, hyperinflation, blackouts, unemployment running at around 18 percent. What are going to be the priorities for the legislature right now? See, for example, the, the, the first steps that we are asking will be a law to liberate all political prisoners. If, if a system is called democratic, you cannot have political prisoners, and there are about 80. Among them, Lopez, which is the leader of one of the most important parties, the mayor of Caracas. Uh, so I believe personally that besides uh, taking this kind of legislation that already Maduro said, he will not agree and he will reject these laws. So you can imagine the first law that we're going to propose is already being uh, uh, it's already been uh, terminated by the president even before we enact the law. It's not a good beginning. It's a very bad beginning. And also, uh, how to change the economic policy, how to liberate the exchange rate, how to liberate the policy of fixed prices, which has been the ruin of the country, is still in the hands of the central bank, the Minister of Finance. Now, uh, I believe that the, there is a saying, that strike while the iron is hot. I think we should really take advantage of the world is looking at our situation, that we have former presidents of Latin America watching what's happening in Venezuela, to really uh, confront politically uh, the regime uh, before, it, it be, before the iron gets cold and people lose interest in what's happening in Venezuela. Like I said, this is an extraordinary opportunity to reunify the country, and that's what we would like to do. But this small group of people, you know, are, are really making it difficult. And now, next week, here in New York, the, uh, the presidential family of Maduro is going to face the problem that two of their nephews are being prosecuted for narco traffickers. That's going to add an other explosive element into the coming days in Venezuela. Now, uh, Maduro's Socialist Party says that they're going to hold an extraordinary Congress to look into what went wrong after this election and the way ahead. Uh, what's his future looking like? Well, you know, the, today the former minister of planning of Chavez and the former minister of labor of Chavez, too, and Maduro had a, their own uh, press conference to criticize the regime and actually to say that there was a disaster, that the corruption is rampant. They are very divided, and, and not, not only divided, most of them voted against the regime, which is really amazing. Uh, and actually, the ones who, this was a, a punishment vote, really. The Venezuelan voted against failed policies, voted against corruption, violence, scarcity, and against the, the loss of freedom and the loss of rights and the loss of uh, 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 an independent judicial system. Uh, and, uh, you know, people actually didn't even know, many of them, for whom they voted. They just, they voted for freedom, liberty, and, and, and to regain the rights. That's really the truth of what really happened uh, Sunday in Venezuela.